Hello and welcome back to a brand new season of the World Ed Temple, the first and only talk show focusing on international students and their culture here at Temple University. I'm your host, Katie Bandish, and thank you for joining me tonight. While typically on our show, we see what our international students have been up to at Temple, this time I traveled abroad this summer, so I got to pack up my bags and head out to Cuba. In July, I was headed for Cuba for two weeks for my internship, where I would be publishing two articles about Cuba as well as a photography portfolio. Cuba is a colorful place. Each morning, our house mom cooked us a traditional breakfast. We ate fruits such as guava, papaya, bananas, as well as crepes and fried fish, and a drink we had freshly squeezed fruit juice and a rich espresso. While most of the buildings seemed deteriorated, it surely didn't affect the happiness of Cubans. And it's true what people say about Cuba. It's a picture right out of the 50s. However, certain viewpoints made it seem like you were in an up-to-date city. Our group had the opportunity to take a classic car tour throughout the city to see various monuments. And while people have a negative perception about Cuba, the people told me that they are always happy and love celebrating and welcoming people from all over the world to see what their country has to offer. I even had a chance to watch how Cubans roll their infamous cigars. Cubans truly indulge in the arts and entertainment, and we were never short of activities to do, whether it was watching live music, going to art museums, or of course, dancing salsa. Cuba was simply beautiful. Cuba was an awesome cultural experience for me, and I highly suggest anyone visiting if they ever have the opportunity to. So we here at the show would love to see what you, the viewers, did over the summer. If you have any photos or videos highlighting your cultural experience, you can share it with us through Facebook page at The World at Temple or by emailing theworldattemple at gmail.com. So for our show today, we have Amel Abdel Fattah, who will be showing us how to make one of her delicious Palestinian home-cooked dishes and we will have a live tasting. Also, two of our field members will be joining us to tell us about an event that they recently covered right here on campus. But before we get started, one of our reporters, Kaya Jones, had the chance to talk to some of the international students on campus to see their plans for this semester. Hello, my name is Kaya Jones, and this is The World at Temple. Today we're here at an event held by the International Students and Scholar Services, and we're asking international students how their summer was and what their new semester goals are. So today I have with me... Xavier Washington. And what year are you? Uh, class of 2019. And what are you studying? Strategic Communication with a minor in Political Science. Ooh, we're kind of similar. Okay, and what is your name? Hi, my name is Ellie Butler. I work in the Office of International Affairs at Temple. I do international marketing to help recruit new international students and to communicate with our current international student body too. I'm Mildred Centeno Rivera from International Services. My name is Sam and my major is Tourism and the staff from this year. <laughs> and what about you? Angela Saura. Yep. And I'm doing business management here at Temple and tourism is a double major and I'm only here until December. I'm Laura, I'm from Colombia and I don't have a major, I'm undecided. I'm Sofika, I'm Dutch, um, my major is sport management and I'm also here until December. My name is Leo, I'm German and my major is also sports management. My name is Prince, I'm Ben Wynn. And what year are you? I'm a senior and I major in finance with minor in accounting. I'm a management information systems major. Uh, I'm a junior here at Temple. Uh, I'm also president of International Student Association here at Temple. And what does that involve? In our office, we work with the immigration session of Temple and we help all the students to come up from overseas to study here and be successful at Temple University. Uh, International Student Association is our uh, association uh, for international students and domestic students. What our goal is to cre create a form of community between uh, two, uh, these two populations and we just want to make sure international students and students that come to Temple from far away feel welcomed and feel homely. Sounds great. I love the work that you're doing. Okay, so what were some of your summer plans? Uh, I went back to Vietnam. I travel a lot, so that's what I love about that summer. 
and uh, I did a little bit of traveling to like a lot of places uh, around the country, and I went on my first cruise. Oh, uh, that's fun! I went. We went to Singapore, Thailand, and Malaysia. Last summer, I went to Chicago. My son was really nice. I was able to intern at uh, the Baltimore City Circuit Court under uh, the clerk of the Circuit Court as one of their uh, office workers. So it was a very good experience, especially with my political science background. Uh, I also worked at Fox IT as head tech consultant. I went to uh, Green, Green Island with my family, yeah, and we really had a good time there. Okay, and what are your new semester goals? Um, my this semester goals is keeping up with good work uh, with ISA and... Um, I, I want to get A in every class. In schoolwork, I want to make sure I get A's in all my classes. I want to really improve my English and to have A's in everything too. I want to keep up, um, keep up the good, uh, hosting good events with ISA and making sure we have um, a lot of participation from international community. Some of my goals for this semester are to continue spreading the good word about globalization at Temple. Our international students bring so much diversity and creativity and culture to campus that people really need to know about it. So we are going to continue having events um, and continue to do great things to make sure everybody knows about globalization. As international students are going about their semester in the city of brotherly love, one of our very own crew members is studying abroad at Temple Japan. We wanted to give him a chance to share his experience so far. Every day I kind of just feel that while I'm in Tokyo, life is almost surreal. Culture shock. I think the biggest one is how nice everyone is, <laughs> to be completely honest. Like, the simplest thing shocked me was the escalator, how everybody moves to the left and you're just going to ride up while everybody on the right just walks up. So that way you're not in each other's way. The weirdest thing that I've seen in Japan, it was a full-on porno shop um, with both real life and animated pornography. There were so many men in there of all ages, all shapes and sizes browsing the shelves like nothing was out of the ordinary. I thought that it was cool that no one was judging one another because in the United States you wouldn't really have that. And culture shock I think is more so being stared at a lot because I'm different looking. Uh, it's not hateful stares, it's more like curiosity I think. It's not exactly positive but not exactly negative I feel. It's just people are more interested in you. So I feel that being a foreigner is more of a positive experience if you can take it that way. Japanese culture, it's very, not frowned upon, but you're not really supposed to stand out or make a scene, per se, and that's like totally how I am. I'm very just like loud and uh, I just do my own thing and I don't really care what people think. It's a community-based country, whereas America is more individualistic, so I feel like with that type of mentality, it's easier to get along with people. There, there's a lot of um, suppressing one's own feelings for the betterment of the, the group, which is, which is really fascinating to me. After six months of being in Japan, um, it actually feels more like my new home already. Everything's better, I feel like. Uh, I feel more at home. Choosing to study abroad has been absolutely the best decision of my life, and I would encourage everyone to try and do it. Within myself, it's the ultimate um, test of my own ability to just go out and, and be there for myself. I am very happy to be here. I feel like everything's opened my brain. <laughs> like I feel no more problem. sociable. I feel like I could talk to more people. I'm always the majority. It's not hard to go somewhere and find people that look exactly like me and share a lot of things that I, that I have in my life. So to have that completely not be the, the, the case here in Japan is awesome. I would really recommend staying for a year, if not longer because staying here will definitely change your experience and your way of life. So, I love Japan. Going abroad can be a challenge, but it is also a great experience that will create unforgettable memories to last a lifetime. If you too wish to study abroad, 
You can visit the Abroad Office in Tuttleman Learning Center, room 200, for more information. It's time for another break, but when we come back, we'll be talking to Cameron Toft and Rose Keenan about their cultural event that they recently covered in the Howard Guinness Student Center. Welcome back. If you're part of Temple's main campus community, then you know there's always a lot of events taking place, such as the Saudi National Day event that took place in the Howard Gitter Student Center on September 23rd. Our reporter Rose Keenan and videographer Cameron Toft were able to attend and talk to the people at the event. <laughs> I'm Rose Keenan with the World at Temple, and we're here at the Saudi Arabia National Day event. Uh, my name is Abdurrahman Suleiman. I'm from Saudi Arabia, and I am the president of the Saudi Club. My major is entrepreneurship and innovation management. This event is the Saudi National Day. This is the 87th Saudi National Day, and it is the first Saudi National Day celebrated here at Temple University. We're all proud to be Saudis, but unfortunately, a lot of people around the world have misconceptions about Saudi Arabia, and they have a lot of negative things, but they don't know the positive things about Saudi Arabia. And we did this event to tell people and educate people about Saudi Arabia and tell them about the positive things that we love about Saudi Arabia. Sure, this is the Saudi Student Association at Temple University, and this is actually our first solo event. Along with the presentations, the Saudi Student Association at Temple set up several information stations. This gave the audience members the opportunity to learn more about the culture, ask questions, and win prizes. We asked one of the members of the association to play the oud. The oud is an instrument that is played in many Middle Eastern cultures. Unlike the guitar that has six strings, the oud has at least 11 strings. My name is Mohammed. Uh, I'm from Saudi Arabia, uh, especially like uh, in the south part in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I have learned this instrument like for one year. It's called oud. It's similar to guitar, but it has like Arabic voice. And I will show you. Can I play? Okay. okay. performance was a dance. Uh, my name is Ali Karo. I'm from Saudi Arabia. I'm also here at, uh, I'm studying at Temple University in engineering technology major. The dance that we did right now, it's, it's called Muzmar. Muzmar, it's actually it came from, the Afri from Africa. And the people who was there, when they came to Mecca, they bring this dance with them. Muzmar was usually performed for spiritual healing practices. The dance involves moving, twirling a bamboo cane to the beat of a drum. To find so many people like who you know, like from your country, and uh, most of my friends here, I just know them here in the uh, temple. So it was a nice experience, and also I, I feel very welcome here. The event could not be over without dinner. After the entertainment and presentations, food was served. This dinner showcased many staples of Saudi Arabian food, including kebab, hummus, rice, falafel, pita, and more. After dinner was served, the group held a trivia game with prizes to finish the event. We have Facebook channel, we have Twitter, and also we have Instagram. Everyone can check that out. And also we have email. Anyone who has questions about Saudi Arabia, anyone who needs help in Temple Campus or Philadelphia, needs help with anything like information about Saudi Arabia, or maybe new students at Temple University who need help, we would help them. Not necessarily if they are Saudis, but even Arabs and international students. And with me today, we have Rose and Cameron, who attended the Saudi uh, national event here, held here at Temple. So why don't you guys tell me a little bit about what that event is? Um, well, it was for the uh, Saudi National Day, which is, uh, it commemorates when the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was established in 1932. 1932. And um, this was the first uh, event for this, uh, for this holiday at Temple, so, yeah. It was held, but it was run by the Saudi Student Association at Temple. It was their first solo event, and in my opinion, I think they did a really great job. We felt really welcomed, even though obviously we're not from that country, but it was open to everybody, and a lot of people showed up. And to start off the event, they started giving out dates and 
Saudi Arabian coffee and it was really nice. We felt really welcomed and everyone was saying hi. And what was um, the main point of the event? Like what were they trying to convey through their event? Well, uh, well, it I mean, for one, it's like it's like how like we would celebrate the 4th of July because it's the 4th of July. Like uh, for this event, uh, a lot of it was geared towards outsiders, which I wasn't anticipating when I came in. I thought it was going to be like I thought I was just going to be like watching the whole thing happen. But they seemed really excited to share everything that they liked about the uh, the Saudi culture. And um, they had different presentations. You can talk about some of the presentations. So they had different pre presentations from a number of people just debunking myths about Saudi Arabia. So a lot of people think, or the general uh, opinion of Saudi Arabia is that it's more of a backwards country because of the laws that women couldn't drive. And actually that got changed mm -hmm. in between this, the event and then the show, so. So how did you guys feel about being able to cover a story where that was an issue that they were talking about and then being able to see the change right there in the news and being like, wow, like, that was something they talked about now like they just like made that possible so what was your reaction to that it was uh it was pretty cool a lot of the there was the one presentation they had t uh talking about the myths and they were saying that there were a bunch of uh like really positive things happening like progressive things happening in saudi arabia about the gender inequality but the biggest problem was the uh the driving thing so in like a week the biggest point that they were focused on was changed like pretty much yeah and i remember when I heard about the news, I was just outside eating lunch, and this girl was like, whoa, women can drive in Saudi Arabia. So I was like, oh, that's really, what a coincidence. Like, yeah. I just went to an event a few oh. days ago, so. Now, what was the number one thing that you learned from attending this meeting, um, being not from the country or knowing much about the culture? I think it was just a general knowledge. I really don't know much about mid Middle Eastern culture. So just seeing it in front of me, seeing like the dances and the music, just everyone being friendly and us getting food at the end, it was really great and it really exposed me at least a little bit to what's going on, not in the United States or in Europe or anywhere else that I've been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with her. It was a, it was just like, a, they were all really nice. It was a fun event. They seemed like they just wanted to have a fun time and we just came and took part in their, uh, their fun. It was good. And what was your favorite part about the presentation or the event that you went to? The food. The food. The food. The food. What kind of food did you guys have, aside from the dates that you had mentioned earlier? There was a kebab. That oh. was really good. There, there was, was a whole selection. It was a whole long was table. A lot. <laughs> it was, uh, they had really good falafel there. That was, oh. that was delicious. Hummus and rice. And they just stacked. You didn't even have to yeah. ask. They just put they, the food on they there. And they're just on. like, try everything. So <laughs> it was all really good. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, would you recommend other students who aren't from the country or maybe are learning about wanting to learn more about cultures? Would you recommend to go to any of their events? Or how can other kids find out about events like these? Of course, I would definitely recommend just going out there and learning more about the different events so you could learn more about the culture. And actually, the president in the package said the different social media where you can stay updated with the different events that are coming up. Thank you again for both of you for joining us today on the show. And when we come back, we have a Palestinian dish that I am just excited to try. As usual for our final segment of the episode, we show you how to cook a dish from a different culture. For today's episode, Amal Abdel Fatah will be cooking us one of her delicious Palestinian dishes for us. The chicken um, has been simmering for about I would say 15 to 20 minutes. You don't want to overcook it too much. We're going to saute all the onion, which is the most important part of the msechen. A little bit of corn oil, mostly used with olive oil, so extra virgin olive oil. While that's heating up, I'm going to put this on, let's say, broil for low. Oh my gosh, this is the fun part, all the onion. I'm so excited. Again, a tiny bit of seven spice, not too much. Some cumin, again, not too much cumin for this part. And a lot of sumac. So I would say this is about 
four tablespoons, maybe. Pretty easily. You don't want it to be too, um, too rubbery. This is what it should look like. You also don't want to overcook it. Overcooking it would probably fall off the bone, like, as soon as you touch it, and <laughs> that's overcooked. So once these become a little bit more wilted, you'll notice they become very soft. So for example, this is one of them, but it's, it's still not done yet. You're gonna add um, a little bit of the chicken broth into this. So this is on medium heat, medium high-ish. But you wanna stand near it so the bottom doesn't uh, cook quicker than the top and so they don't get stuck to the bottom. I'm gonna add more cement if you want it to look like purpley, very purpley. So I'm just gonna pour some olive oil onto the bread and it has to be olive oil, it can't be corn oil. throw the piece of bread in the oven itself so it's on broil low you want to watch it you don't want to put it on for more than I would say a minute you can tell here they're becoming a little more over so at this point we can put the chicken broth in so they're not a hundred percent cooked yet they're almost there and that's when you want to put the broth. So this part, not everyone does. Um, some Palestinians do it. You just take the chicken. sort of add it to the onion just to pick up the flavor a little bit and to add the chicken flavor to the onion. Um, also this, I tend to put a little bit of the chicken broth on the bread. and place it into another pan completely. I'm gonna put this on broil. I'm gonna put it on low so we can keep it in for, uh, let's say about three minutes. Again, you're gonna keep watching it. What you want it to do is just to get a little crisp on top. Again, my name is Amal Abdel Fattah, and this is Amsachen. Thank you for cooking with me. Welcome to our show, Amal. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your background um, culturally and stuff. Well, I'm half Palestinian. Um, my other half is half white and half Muscogee Creek Indian. Um, and I'm a Temple University graduate. Um, I graduated recreation therapy. So uh, we know food is a huge part of culture mm -hmm. all around the world. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what kind of dish you made for us today? Like, what are we looking at here? So this is called Um This, uh, it's, so the basis of it is a homemade bread called tabun, uh, which is usually made on stone. Um, and it kind of gives it that, um, that fluffy-ish effect. Um, and the basis and the, the second like most important part of this dish is um, onion and a spice called samek. Um, samek, I, as, hard, as much as I tried to find the English translation for it, there really isn't. It's just called samek. 
um, it's off a, um, a plant. So the fruit is kind of dried out and ground into the spice. It, it kind of has a sour lemony uh, flavor to it and it's purple colored, so it kind of makes it look, oh, you know, it's supposed to look nice. But <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it's topped with um, chicken. The chicken, um, you would usually um, cook it, a stove top, and then roast it to give it more of a crunch. Um, and then top it again with more spices. Um, yeah, this is one of the most famous Palestinian dishes. Um, and the name of Sechen itself means kind of, um, uh, not toasted, but kind of uh, heated. You know, mm -hmm. kind of all those words kind of together. And yeah. it's just all put in the oven at, at once at the end. And then you have that. So <laughs> how long does this uh, dish typically take to prepare? I would say about um, maybe two hours, only because it requires a lot of chopping onion, um, and kind of transferring a lot of um, certain ingredients from one pot to another pot to another. So it's about two hours, yeah. And you can make this right in your own kitchen, or do yeah. you have to, yeah? Well, except for the bread. Um, so the, the bread, it's hard to make at home. Um, uh, this bread, we, we bought it from other Palestinians in Jersey. Um, this is like the most authentic, you know, bread that for the dish itself. But there is a... Um, there is a bread similar to it that you that you can get in the grocery store. It's a Greek whole wheat flatbread. It's the closest thing that you can get. It's not the original, but it, it'll do. And I've and I've used it before for this dish. Now, um, how did you learn to make this dish? Was this a recipe passed down, or you just like from cooking with family, or? Um, yeah, just cooking with my mom. Um, even though she's herself um, isn't Palestinian, my dad's Palestinian, but I mean, obviously, we picked up on all the dishes from my dad's side of the family. Um, I watched her do it. I also spoke with my um, stepmother, um, who is full Palestinian, and she kind of just came from Palestine recently, and she has this, like, f you know, the most authentic recipe in her head. So I kind of combined all ideas from my mom, my stepmother, my um, aunts, and everyone in my family, and just <laughs> got and got this so <laughs> and um, I know you were saying that this is typically served like at a, in a much bigger portion so tell me a little bit about that and why it comes in such a big portion yeah so um, so the taboon bread itself it's usually um, kind of it's it's a big <laughs> piece of bread um, it's served um, on a table where everyone can kind of share uh, the way I have it today is cut in, in quarters just for the sake of space. But yeah, it's usually, tabun bread is usually a big piece of bread and it's served that way. And it's kind of, it's presented that way, served that way and kind of eaten um, as a family together. All right, awesome. So let's try some of this. <laughs> um, so you want to eat it with me? Yeah, so um, right, so this is finger food. So okay. you can, I mean, you can use a fork if you want. All right. Um, you could break off a piece. All right. And... I usually the way, yeah, and then I just okay, take so like filling is yeah. So you would take like a small piece of the chicken and oh my god, this is like <laughs> 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 this is all you need to do. Okay. Yeah. So I I take small bites. So. All right. And um. Just like pick it up like yeah. this. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I definitely taste like the lemony mm -hmm. zest. Yeah, so that's the spice samak. Yeah, it's so sweet. There's there's a sweetness to the onion, mm -hmm. the way that it's made, and then it's topped with the samak. It kind of balances each other out. It tastes so good. This is this is one of my favorite dishes in Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you, Amel, for joining us and teaching us a little about your dish. And I want to thank all the viewers for joining us for another great episode on the World at Temple. A special thank you to Amal Abdel Fattah for cooking the delicious msechan. We hope that by listening to these stories it has brought you a different cultural perspective. You can follow us on Facebook at the World at Temple to watch our previous episodes and some exclusive content to learn more about the different cultures featured. Until next time, have fun exploring the World at Temple.